Hi, Victoria here. Welcome back to the Bothy Therapy Room. And tonight I'm going to share with you the hips self massage for stress relief. Some nice step by step instructions that we can all do in our own homes or wherever is comfortable for you to be able to treat yourselves. I'll explain exactly what type of ailments it helps with and how you should feel at the end. Uh, stick to the end because we're going to share some nice deep breaths together and a beautiful affirmation. Uh, so I'll see you soon. Let's spread a little healing. Hello, good evening guys. I'm going to show you that lovely hip self massage. First of all, I'm just going to show you what we're going to be treating. This is my lovely friend, the skeleton and uh, his legs are a bit askew. So yes, the lovely spine coming down to the back of the spine here. We've got the iliac, these bones that are at our sides here. We've got the sacrum, which is um, attached to the length of the spine. And this is that last part of the sacrum, or the, the spine, where the um, five bones are actually fused together and so they don't separate how these do, these twist nicely and bend nicely. Whereas this one is one big flat plane, like a plateau. Um, at the pointed end here, we have the coccyx, which is actually made up of several much smaller bones fused together. So this makes up the pelvic girdle. At the front here, these iliac come round to um, pr produce this front formation with the sit bones underneath. In the centre we have a little piece of cartilage which is slightly cushioned, um, allowing for that those two bones that are coming together like this to be slightly cushioned where they meet. But sometimes there can be a shifting, there can be a twisting, so one bone can be twisted up or back, the other one forward, the other way around. They can twist left or right away from the pelvis. Um, and also that puts a lot of pressure on the two joints at the back in the pelvis. So within this section here, this is called sacroiliac where this bone meets the sacrum, the same on this side. So you've got two sacroiliac uh, joints there. And what can happen is they can separate slightly. I see a lot of this in the clinic. And we call it an SIS, like a, a sacroiliac separation or a sacroiliac strain. So I'm going to show you how we avoid that and how we help ourselves if we feel like we've got some strain going on in our hips. So we call this area the ASIS, the anterior superior iliac spine. And with these rotations, as we can feel that it, it moves nice and easily, but sometimes it might move a little bit too far, uh, maybe because of an accident, whether it's in the car or tripping over, or whether it's also being caused, I see it, as I say, in the clinic, with one-sided action. So that can be from playing a one-sided sport, like tennis or golf, for instance, or it can be one-sided action, like always doing a certain action only with the one side, for instance, hoovering, sweeping, raking, mopping etc and all of these one-sided where we put our foot forward like this can really put a lot of strain um, and movement forward on the one hip and the other one is always rotated backwards so we need to try and switch and make sure that we alternate when we are doing those um, those jobs or those sports I know it's difficult with sport um, the, the thing to do is always to make sure that we're supple and um, try and do yoga in between those sports or some kind of balancing exercise to try and bring balance and uh, like no lopsidedness so that we are using muscles equally and stretching muscles and soft tissue equally both sides of the body. So um, I've been reading about this recently and apparently um, the emotion of anger and also the, 
the feeling of sexuality is contained in the pelvic region, this pelvic girdle that I've just shown you on the skeleton. And when we have anger, it produces like a stomping, stamping action and that can reverberate up our bodies. So for instance, if we're angry, we might notice that when we're walking, running, etc., we might come down more heavily and that will reverberate like a vibration and come up to the, the pelvis and create quite a lot of uh, tension there. And that can, what that can do with this skeleton, as I say, this area at the front may have too much strain. So if one of these sacroiliac has slightly separated through strain, then that will put a huge amount of strain also on the other joint at the front, the, the pubis symphysis, which is right here. And so when we have too much strain on this area, it may also slightly open. And when the pelvic pelvis opens, we notice that it not only opens at the front, but actually shifts forward. It almost, it's almost like it tips. And when it tips and it's open, then that can lead to the organs contained in the lower part of the torso. So yes, we're talking about the sexual organs, the urinary organs, for instance, the, uh, the bladder, the ureter, the, and the, the tubes up to the kidneys and the kidneys themselves, but also the digestive organs. For instance, the small intestine, which is in the center here, and also the colon and the other valves, which are quite low down here um, near our hip bones. So they would be the iliosacral valve that I talked about in my last video, and also a valve on, on your left side called the Houston valve. And this tipping action can, can actually produce um, a feeling of a loss of control because things like our urinary system, it needs to be strong, it needs to be held up really well by those ligaments, which is just like sellotape in our bodies, holding things in the right place. But if there is a tipping and a heavy, like a gravitational feeling pulling forwards and down, then that can also lead to depression and anxiety because it, it, it feels like we're going down and it will bring our heads down. It will make us look downwards and forwards. And so what we're doing today is we're going to strengthen this area in order to strengthen the organs, our spines, and therefore keep our heads up and our jaw and our neck aligned. So that's going to be good for our mental health as well as our physical health. So let's get on with this massage. So what this will help with is all manner of issues from urinary to sexual to uh, digestive, but also muscular, skeletal, and nerve, so neural, um, it will help with in so many different ways. So here we go guys, we're going to start the, the pelvic massage by introducing nice flat hands in a forward circular motion over the whole hips and immediately you can feel the warmth increasing there. Now I notice when I have a full body massage wherever I am in the world or even some other kind of bodywork treatment that is supposed to be full body, I notice that the hips are often left out and I do wonder why. I notice maybe some schools don't teach their pupils to include this area. So this is getting really nice and warm now. That's good. Now let's go the opposite direction. We're coming forwards, forwards from the top. That's lovely. And try and include the whole hip area. Okay, that's wonderful. Okay, and now we're going to do caterpillar whole fingers in this action. And we're going to start at the front of our iliac bones. You can feel those bones at the front there 
and we're going to do caterpillar with the whole fingers, whole hands if you like. Now you might want to anchor your thumbs at the top like this. It's difficult not to let the thumbs massage your tummy at the same time, but that's, that's a bonus. Okay, so a few on the front. Just shake your shoulders, shake out, make sure they're nice and loose, lovely. And then we're coming, so we started here, we're coming out slightly, it's still at the front. Going to caterpillar those another three times, then to the side. Now, doesn't that feel great on the sides of the hips? You might want to come a little bit lower to the crease of your leg. Coming up with that lovely caterpillar action. Maybe all the way to the waist. Shake those shoulders again in case they're tensing up. And now slightly to the back. That's it. Lovely caterpillar action all the way up over the buttock, the iliac, which are the hip bones, maybe even as far as the waist. That's great. And now near each other, each side of the sacrum, another caterpillar action. Oh, that feels great already. Hope you're enjoying this at home. And this is going to be really easy to remember how to uh, repeat these if you wanted to. If you have hip pains over the next few days, then revisit this video and repeat. It's really good to do. I'll put some chapters on here so you can just go straight to these actions. That's great. So we've done whole hand in one direction and the other. We've done the caterpillars up. And now we're going to do a soft tissue release. And oh, now I love these. So first of all, find the crease of your leg to your hip on one side. Find something you can hold on to perhaps. And move your leg in a nice arc. Now I'm moving mine quite obviously in a nice big circle for you, just to show you on the video. But by all means, if you want to, just start small. And with your fingers, you want to be pushing into that crease. Now what this does, having warmed the ligaments up, is you're actually stretching those ligaments now. So I'm pushing with my fingers and I'm rotating the knee in one way. It can work the other way as well, but I particularly like the outward movement. There we are. Now move your hand slightly towards the outside of the hip. Do the same again. Now, get to know your own body. Feel and sense what's going on today that I may not have felt yesterday. So that from one day to the next, when you're repeating these moves, you can see how it feels and you know whether you're having a good day or not in this area. That's it. And then if you want to hold on to something, I'll try and do it without. And rotate on the other side. Feels great in that groin, hip, leg crease. Come out slightly. I'm not doing a bad job of balancing here, guys. I was put on the spot, as it were. Okay, and now we're going to do some finding of the sacral holes. Now, I know this sounds a bit strange that your sacrum that I've just showed on the skeleton here has holes, but where the nerves come out of the bone, there are some nice little holes there. There are actually, uh, there are eight, there are four pairs. So we're gonna start low down and you're going to be using the tips of maybe one or two fingers. So maybe I'll use my middle and ring fingers. I'm gonna start quite low down each side of the sacrum like this and just press okay we're just pressing firmly but sensitively so don't do anything that hurts you and let go and come up slightly so we're going to be trying to find all eight of those sacral holes and what this does is it stimulates the nerve endings that those nerves that are going through the sacrum. And 
it should feel good. If it feels sensitive, just ease off a little. Just do what feels nice for you. We're all different. And even if I was to do this on a different day, I might find it different from one day to the next. So I've come up to the third level now. It's about here. Then I'm coming up to the top sacral pair, about here. And press. How are your shoulders feeling? Is this feeling a little bit tight on your shoulders? Should we just give them a shake? Okay, so let's shake the shoulders by starting at the hands. Let those hands become rubbery, loose. You can hear my watch. Okay, nice and loose. And that's actually reverberating all the way up into the shoulders. Go as slow or as fast as you like. Just do whatever feels good for you. And now let the arms shake a little bit further. Oh, get rid of all that tension. It's almost like you're shaking off water. Let it go, let it go. And even more into the shoulders. A nice big shake, that's great. Wonderful. This is often how I start my yoga every day with some lovely shaking, getting rid of tension, warming up and loosening the whole body. Okay, you might want to do a little twist. So this is also good for the hips, but I like doing this because it realigns the whole spine. Basically, this is what a dog does when it shakes. So it starts at the head and it gives a really good shake down the whole body and then ends with the tail. And that's what we're doing now. So we're twisting from one side to the other. Oh, those shoulders feel much better now. Wonderful. A nice spinal twist. How does that feel? Oh, I can hear my ankle clicking. So I'm bringing my ankle up slightly, that the heel is rising as I'm at my furthest point. And I can feel the twist into my waist, which are those muscles called the obliques. Oh, and take a nice deep breath and exhale. Whew. Okay. So we're gonna come back to that hip massage again. We're going to make soft fists, and I'm actually going to be using the main knuckle of the index fingers. So bring them round to the back, and this is called petrissage. So we're going to be massaging each side of the sacrum, which is the lower part of the back, as it fits into, like a jigsaw puzzle, as it fits into the pelvis. So massage. Now it is difficult applying mass, uh, pressure into the back of you. It's almost like you want to be applying pressure away from you. So I, re I do realize this is a strain on your shoulders. That's why we did that shoulder loosening a moment ago. That feels great. So what you're doing now is warming up this area, each side of your sacrum. Here. Okay, soft fists. Lovely. That's so good. Okay, so now we're going to reintroduce that effleurage. Whole hand up and down. Up at the front, down at the back. Super. Now the good thing about most of the exercises I've just shown you are that if you are sitting down, so you might be watching this on a bus, or you might not be able to stand up as readily and balance and all of that, then you, you might want to reproduce these sitting down, which is very, very possible. So if I was sitting down now, uh, not that you can see me very well, let's put my chair up. I can massage my hips like this, I can use my knuckles at the back, I can even rotate my hip by pressing into the groin there, if you're able and want to be doing that. 
and I can do those caterpillar actions. That's great. Okay, so let's go back to that effleurage. Let's go the other way around so we're coming up at the back, down at the front. The pressure is always towards the heart, so we're doing nice firm pressure up, slightly lighter down. Nice firm pressure up and lighter down. Lovely. Ah, oh, there's my lovely word, lovely again. Will I ever stop saying it? Probably not. Oh, that's great. So, apparently women mainly suffer with hip and pelvic problems. Um, maybe that's to do with, uh, it could be psychological. You know, Louise Hay, that I refer to a lot, often talks about issues that start psychologically but actually culminate in us physically. So with the hips, it can be a feeling of not being supported um, you know I talk about the pelvis opening and tipping forwards that it has a feeling of uh, dropping and falling um, not being in control so let's take that control and let's massage our own hips and look after ourselves you know it's really important to especially look after our pelvis this is our our ability to move forward in life, our hips point forward. So all of us, let's look forward, point forward, and uh, look to the future. Okay, so in a moment, I'm going to share with you a nice affirmation. You might want to sit down at this point and let's take some nice deep breaths. Okay, so let's take three nice long breaths. And with your eyes closed, just affirm to yourself. I joyfully move forward, supported and sustained by the power of life. I move into my greater good. I am secure. Love and forgiveness. I let others be themselves. I am free. I feel supported in life. I let others be themselves. I am free. Thank you for joining me today. That was taken from Louise Hay. You can heal your life. And I look forward to joining you next week, next Monday evening, when I'm going to bring you the upper legs. So join me then and have a fantastic week. Bye guys.